was your first job? Asking around this building, I was struck by how many people delivered newspapers. 13 years old, I became a Long Island Press delivery boy. A newspaper girl. I was delivering papers when I was uh, 11 or 12. And lots of people said their first job was restaurant work. My job was to clean up the parking lot of the Dairy Queen. I was washing dishes Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. I was eight years old. I worked at my father's bakery. I washed the pots and pans. I scraped the floors. I don't even child think I, labor. I don't violated. even think I got paid. America makes it illegal to work when you're young, but there's an exception if you work for your family. My job is working in my family's restaurant at a very young age. They started me at eight years old cleaning the tables, and then I was promoted to hostess, and then promoted to waitress. And they used to, I used to, my dad used to make me work shift after shift when waitresses would call off. And I would work all these shifts in a row and I'd get so angry at him because he'd send all the other waitresses home. Some people talk about how hard they had to persist just to get a first job. Going around town asking the business owners if I, they would pay me to sweep their sidewalks and their parking lots. Some persisted even when the money wasn't good. My first job was mowing lawns at the University of Denver for the princely sum of a buck fifteen an hour. And when the work was boring. Okay, my first job was in the back room of a dairy in Appleton, Wisconsin, and I had the job of getting all the coins from the cash register and putting all the pennies in those paper rolls. Then I put all the nickels in those paper rolls and the dimes and the quarters in paper rolls. So I spent about eight hours a day stuffing those uh, paper rolls and they would go off to the bank. Many worked long hours. Working school nights till 2 a.m. And my mom would pick me up at 2 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> she was raising five kids, not just me. And the third night this happened, she said, Billy, you need to find another job. <laughs> Shannon Breen helped her mother renovate houses. I had a little scraper tool and I had to go around to every pane of glass after they were painted and scrape off any glue, any paint that was left on there. Charles Payne worked at a little shop in Harlem. It was a tough gig. Uh, you know, it was, a, it was a, you know, you did the storing, you did the register, but also I was in a location where I had to also be a security guard as well. And uh, that was a pretty tough one, that's all I can tell you. Today, some laugh about the hard work. I was a garbage man, uh, and it was one of those guys <laughs> who rode on the back of the truck, you know, you jumped off and they, all the pails were there and you threw them in. And they didn't have like plastic ones back then, they had those big heavy metal things. And you throw them in and sometimes you pick the thing up and you go, whoa! And the hard work taught valuable lessons. Did it change my life? It most certainly did. Um, I decided I never wanted to ever, ever, ever be a professional uh, person who puts those money in those paper things. It was dreadfully dull and I decided I have to have a job that's fascinating and of course I always wanted to be a lawyer because I knew I'd always be in trouble and I'd never be able to afford a lawyer so I better be a lawyer so I ultimately became a lawyer. Only a few of my colleagues found early jobs in the field we're in now. They were giving away airtime as a contest, be a DJ for an hour and uh, so I was and I was. Well what did you do to win the contest? Well, Oh, you entered a playlist. You said, you know, what songs would you play? And I really thought, okay, now what does the station sound like? can't believe that they gave me a key to a radio station and let me open it up, sign it on the air, and, uh, you know, do everything from news and disc jockey and sports. And it was a terrific job. And I found only one other person who really liked his first job. First job I had was between ages 16 and 20 when I worked in the summers as a sailing instructor in a day camp and what it taught me was that there are people in the world who when you're doing a job that you would do for nothing will actually pay you and when they're offering it don't object most first jobs were not much fun they didn't have a dishwashing machine i used to have to wash pots and pans and scrub and all the plates and it was a busy restaurant i could tell you what my worst job was it was it was washing dishes in an industrial kitchen at a hospital the dishwasher was so big you walked into the dishwasher and I've never been so wet, so humid, so hot uh, any time in my life. But most everyone said they're grateful for the lessons they learned. It taught me that if you work hard you can, um, you know, you can earn things and accumulate things and, and do with it what you will. Talk to the value of work and also the dignity of work. There's something about, you know, getting it yourself. It taught me that uh, you had to keep showing up for work. It taught me to be punctual because if people don't get their newspaper they're very angry. What it taught me was that um, 
I could do better than minimum wage. And I went out the next summer, bought my own lawn mower, and I would charge people eight bucks to mow their lawns, and I would do it in about an hour, and I got a much better, I had a much more lucrative business working for myself. I learned that if I wanted to buy anything for myself, I needed money and I needed to make my own money. So it was a lesson I learned very early on that I wasn't entitled to anything. So it was uh, in all regards, it was really the beginning of a life that, uh, you know, as a capitalist. I learned it was kind of a hoot, even that early in the morning, to make a little money. Stuart Varney's first job was working in one of these double-decker buses in London taught me a lot. How do you deal with drunks? I learned how to do that. How do you learn to deal with the general public? Well, you get a lot of that as a London transport bus conductor. It also taught you punctuality. You may not be late when appearing for your shift. It was one of the toughest jobs I ever had, but I'm glad I did it. Reason TV's Nick Gillespie learned a lesson he wasn't supposed to learn. I worked as a page in my hometown library in Middletown, New Jersey. I was supposed to put books away, uh, you know, as they came, as they were returned. I took a, uh, a cart of books and I put, I restocked them in about 20 minutes and I came back and I said, okay, where's the next rack? And the people who worked there, this was a municipal library, they were like, what, you're done? And I was like, yeah, that, you know, this is great work. Uh, you know, let me, let me do some more. And they were like, no, you were supposed to take two hours to put those away. Now just go away and come back at the end of your shift. And what I learned from that was I don't want to work in the public sector. Whatever the job, most everyone said they learned just by working. It gave me the work ethic that I have now. It taught me what hard work is. And then I worked every other job in the restaurant business. Then I moved on to the construction business. And somehow I thought, let me try this radio and TV thing. And I've been very blessed. Even if the job would be illegal today. I was 13 years old and I went to work at Tyson's Drugstore and you're not supposed to drive at 13, you may have heard about that, but at the time at 14 and a half in Mississippi you could get your driver's license. I don't know. They gave me my start. And then Hardee's after that, but that's another story. Stossel, back to you. My first job was on an assembly line. I stuck pieces of plastic and metal together for a company called a PICO. That stands for American Photocopy Equipment, here's one of their ads. On the assembly line, I wasn't smiling like this woman is. I hated the job. It was hot and boring, but working there made me eager to get good grades in school so I might have other choices. And four years later, I got a job as a researcher at a TV station. One day they needed someone to cover a fire. No one else was around, so they put me on the air. And to my surprise, that became a career. I say surprise because I never planned to be a TV reporter. I didn't even watch TV news. I never took a journalism course. It's why I think you interns are doing the right thing. Experimenting with careers, figuring out what you like, what you're good at, what you're not good at. And I have one other piece of advice for you. It's important to keep showing up, to apply for the job you want. And if you don't get it, apply again. Job seekers often assume companies are organized, that there's this personnel office that carefully evaluates each applicant. So people drop off their resumes and wait to hear. But often that's not how it works. Often companies are disorganized. They, they don't want to spend any money to hire anyone until suddenly they need someone right now. And then it's tedious to go through all those resumes on file. But they remember the intern who was helpful last summer or the kid who just shows up repeatedly, eagerly asking for work. That persistent person is often the one who gets hired. That's how Martha McCallum got a job. My first job was at the Village Cheese Shop in Wyckoff, New Jersey. I think I went in there once a week for about six weeks and bugged them every time I went in, asking them if they needed anybody for after school help. They finally hired her. Now, it's no fun to just show up and keep asking, but it does work. Outside a nearby welfare office, I was told recently, there are no jobs. There's nothing out there. Nothing. No jobs around? No. Oh. Really? I asked my team to check that out. Within a few blocks of that welfare office, they found lots of businesses that want to hire people. Yes, we are hiring. <laughs> this frozen yogurt store wishes more people would apply. We need like two or three people at all the time, basically. Of 79 businesses that we ask in less than two hours, 40 said they would hire. 24 said they'd take people with no experience. The owner of this restaurant said he'd hire lots of people. How many? About 12 to 14 people. 
I would hire more than that, but, uh, you know, the hardest thing is to get good help. So right after that interview, I told two job seekers about that restaurant. Both said, great, I'll apply. One waited for the start of business Monday and dropped off his resume. He thought that was more professional. But st he still hasn't been offered a job. The other job seeker just showed up the next day, Saturday, Saturday morning. He got the job, and he's here. Herman, would you stand up? Uh, tell, tell us what happened. You just showed up? Yeah, I showed up and I applied. And he said, okay, I'll hire you. He put you in the, uh, in the kitchen, hot, difficult work, minimum wage. But within a few days, you were making more than minimum wage? Yes, I became a waiter. And some of the waiters make 100 to 150 bucks a night at this place. That's correct. So you want to go to graduate school someday? A restaurant is not going to be a career for you, but is it, what are you learning? Is it worth it? It is worth it. It's actually a great experience. Why? I meet successful people every day, and they give me great advice and tips on how to become successful. I love it. I love going there every day and learning new stuff is like a stepping stone. 